Welcome to KCF's online church service. We're glad you've joined us. Waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I've made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder For every young in your love is freedom's untainted with you Hi, and welcome to our service. If you're new here, you may be wondering who we are and what this church is all about. Well, the heart of the matter is this. We're a group of people doing our best to love God and love those around us. Celebrating the birthdays this week, on the 24th, Charlene Williams, Nathan Ickley, and Jaden Tybos. On the 23rd, Precious Naklunga, Edith Zlamini, and Denusha Jose. On the 22nd, Ludvinia Vaz, Catherine Maduku, Alejandro Mansdorp. On the 20th, Marcel Dupriz and Angela Iqbal. Celebrating the anniversaries this week. On the 24th, Anthony and Tracy Naidu. On the 21st, Marlon and Sandra Modley. And Pastor Srini and Pam Marimoto. On the 20th, Wayne and Ursula Coventry. Good morning, KCF family, and welcome to our online service. We are so glad you've joined us this morning, and we want to say thank you for inviting us into your home. We pray that even as we continue this morning, I would encourage you to stand up with us, gather your family around, and let's worship God together. Amen.
Well, a very good morning to you, KCF Church family, and welcome once again to our online service. It's really a joy for us to, to minister to you, but what is better is that, you know, we see you in person where we can greet you, hug you, pray for you, and bless you. And we are looking forward to the time where the situation will become normalized. I bring greetings to you from Pastor Valencia. She truly misses you. Our pastors, Pamela and uh, uh, Strini and uh, Pastor Brendan and Shamla, um, I just encourage you that even as you are working with them during this time that uh, we're trying to coordinate um, a, a lot of things through the pastors, through the cells, through the zones, that you work with each other so that we can do our best during this time. Amen. Uh, some of you would have taken note that uh, or, or been advised that we have a relief uh, fund that we have set up in the church to help some of the destitute families that uh, need assistance. And I really encourage you to support the effort. And uh, even in your personal capacity, um, you know, think about those that may be in need, maybe your neighbor, uh, a friend next door, or some elderly person that needs some help. Let's be compassionate and share the love of Jesus during this time. Amen. So I want to get to the reading of the word this morning. And... Um, I want to encourage you to um, just uh, bow your heads and as we pray this morning as we get ready for the Word of God. So, our mighty God and Heavenly Father, we say thank you this morning for the worship that we had. Thank you that we can spend this time in worshipping you and praising you and listening to your Word. Lord, we hear, Father God, you encourage us that we're going to move into a time of abundance, that you're opening new doors for us that you're going to pour out your favor upon us, that we're going to shift to another level, Father, in our relationship with you, in our relationship with our family, in our relationship with the purpose and the plan that you have for us. Take us to another level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, even as we read your word, may this word bring encouragement to each and every one that will hear in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning about seeing God's divine intervention in the interruptions of life. Seeing God's divine intervention in the interruptions of life. Firstly, what is or what are interruptions? Well, the dictionary says this. It says that interruptions are some abrupt occurrence that interrupts an ongoing activity. It says it's a time or an interval during which there is a temporary cessation, a temporary stop of something or some activity. Now, we know that interruptions can come in many forms, like natural disasters, like sickness, like death, like accidents, like crime, wars, uh, misfortune, hardships, basically the adversities of many kinds. And with it, they bring hardship, with it, they bring heartache, with it, they bring discouragement and pain, and sometimes, we get to a place where we doubt God and we lose faith in Him. But this morning, I want to remind you that Jesus said in His world, I have told you these things. What are these things? He was talking to His disciples. He says, the things that you're going to suffer, the hardship you're going to go through, the persecution you go through for believing in Me and being My disciple. He said, I have told you these things so that in Me, you will have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, Jesus said, I have overcome this world. No matter what the interruptions we experience in our daily lives, they are there to remind us that the things in this world are very, very uncertain. Amen? They're very uncertain. The Apostle Paul had to deal with these kinds of interruptions often. He was jailed and put in prison. He had to face hostile situations where he was beaten. He had sickness, he was shipwrecked, a whole lot of things that happened to him. But throughout those interruptions in his life, Paul never stopped believing God, believing in the plan and purpose that he had for him, and he never stopped sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to ask you this morning, as you look back to the interruptions of your life, as you look back to the past, how easily has your faith and trust in Jesus been interrupted? 
Were there times where you doubted, where you lost faith, where you got discouraged? I'm sure all of us can think of those times. But let me just say one thing to you and make a truth statement. No matter what the interruptions that we would have went through in our lives or the hardships or the challenges or the difficult times, I want you to know that throughout all that time, there's one truth that you must never forget, that God loves us and He will never stop loving us. He loves us unconditionally and that love for us will never be interrupted no matter what happens in this world. And if you know that in your heart, it brings peace of mind, peace amidst the storms of life. So how do we see God's divine interventions in the interruptions of life? Well, I want to say to you, the first thing is that you must believe and have faith in the Word of God. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word will remain forever. God and His Word are one. And we have to believe in this Word in any situation and every situation. You know, I am concerned that the children of God People who believe in God and believe in Jesus and believe in the Word, you know, are so easily swayed by the news that we, we watch on television, by the information that we get. And sometimes we don't even know the source of the information. We don't know who it is, the fake news that we receive. We get so taken, you know, and stressed out about the, the prophecies and the, we start to talk about the conspiracy theories and Instead of believing in God's word, we end up stressing and worrying and unnecessarily causing fear. God wants us to see him in everything, to believe him in everything. I pray, may faith rise up in you today. And the Bible says that faith comes by hearing God's word. And so if you would turn with me in the book of Romans chapter 8, and verse 28, I'm going to read Romans 8, 28 to 39. The Bible says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those He predestined, He also called. Those He called, He also justified. Those He justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And in verse 37, the Apostle Paul says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors, to him who loved us, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want to go to verse 28 and that is the, 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 the main part of the scripture this morning. And it says, and we know. What is it that we know? We know for certainty from this word, from the word of God. We know from our own experience. And we know from all the heroes of faith that Hebrews 11 talk about. That in all things, in all things, not some things, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Someone once said, if you look for bad, you will find bad. If you look for good, you will find good. You always, in life, you always find what you're look, looking for. The secret is what you choose to see. What you choose to see 
in the interruptions of life, in the challenges of life, in the hardships of the life, what do you choose to see? That's the secret. So let's look, let's look at some examples of how God works all things for good. I want you to pay attention now because I'm going to ask you some questions. And the question I'm going to ask, ask you, you will answer either A, B or C. Man's plan, A. B is Satan's plan. C is God's plan. Now there is no right or wrong answer. And you could just uh, maybe shout out wherever you are. And so I want to uh, uh, look at the story of Moses recorded for us in the book of Exodus. Where we read the account of Moses when Moses was born. The Bible tells us um, that Pharaoh gave an order for all the Hebrew boys to be killed at that time. So I want to ask you a question. Was that order that Pharaoh gave, was it man's plan? Was it Satan's plan? Or was it God's plan? Okay. All right. Then when Moses' mother could not hide him any longer, and she put him in a basket, and she placed him in the Nile River, which was said to be full of crocodiles, was it A, man's plan? Was it B, Satan's plan? Or was it C, God's plan? Okay, let's move on. When Pharaoh's daughter found baby Moses and took him as a son to live in the palace as a prince, was it A, was it B, or was it C? When Moses killed the Egyptian and he had to flee from the palace and flee and run from Pharaoh, was it A, man's plan, was it B, Satan's plan, or was it C, God's plan? And then finally, when Moses was chosen to be the deliverer of the Israelites, the Hebrew people, was it A, man's plan? Was it B, Satan's plan? Was it C, God's plan? If you look at all these situations in those different situations, I'm sure you would have had different answers to those questions. But I want to say to you today, you know, God sees the end from the beginning. We have limited knowledge. Amen. But God has solemnly, uh, divinely works everything so that his plan and his purpose for his people is fulfilled. Let's look at another example um, in the book of Genesis when we talk about Joseph. Joseph, as a young boy, had a dream. And God gave him this beautiful dream. And as he shared it with his brothers, his brothers got so jealous. So answer A, B, or C. When Joseph's brothers were jealous of him and threw him in a pit, was it A, man's plan? Was it B, Satan's plan? Or was it C, God's plan? When they sold him to the Ishmaelite as a slave, was it A, was it B, or was it C? When he was sold to Potiphar, Potiphar was one of Pharaoh's officials, was it A, B or C. When he was falsely accused and put into prison, was it A, man's plan, B, Satan's plan, C, God's plan. When he was asked to interpret Pharaoh's dream, was it A, B or C. When he was put in, in, in charge of Egypt and had to come up with a strategy of how during the time of famine, uh, during the time of abundance to save for the time of famine, was it A, man's plan, B, Satan's plan, C, God's plan. When eventually his family, who was starving uh, and came to, had to come to Egypt to find food, and Joseph provides for them and saves the, the, the entire uh, Hebrew uh, people then, was it A, man's plan, B, Satan's plan, or C, God's plan. In Genesis 50 and verse 20, Joseph said this to his brothers. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The saving of many lives. We can talk about uh, Job and all that happened to him and ask our question, was it man's plan? Was it Satan's plan? Was it God's plan? We look at the Jesus and all that happened to him at the various uh, stages of his uh, journey to the cross. Was it man's plan? 
Satan's plan, God's plan. We can talk about Paul, his life as an apostle, spreading the gospel, moving from city to city, and all the challenges he faced. We can talk about Peter, all that happened in his life. Was it A, man's plan, B, Satan's plan, or C, God's plan? See, when we look at it, you know, when we see the big picture, we can draw a conclusion that we know in all things God works for the good of those who love Him and to those who are called according to His plan and purpose. Let me ask you a final question. The coronavirus, is it A, man's plan? Is it Satan's plan? Or is it God's plan? In verse 31, of Romans 8 if the scripture says what then shall we say in response to this if God is for us who can be against us and the obvious implied answer is nobody he who did not spare his son but gave him up for us all how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen nobody it is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And the obvious implied answer is nobody. Shall trouble or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. Verse 37 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. That's right. More than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Are you convinced this morning? Let me just share with you a quick, a few points quickly. Number one, interruptions reminds us that we are not in control. You know, we love to be in control. We love power. We love to know what is going on, what is happening. But interruption reminds us that we are not in control. Number two, Interruptions help us to refocus on what's important. Right now, we are refocusing on the two most important things. Our family and God. Amen? Number three. Interruptions, they test our faith and help us to develop character. They test our faith. In James, he said, consider it pure joy. When you go through trials and testings of many kinds. For the trials and the testings, the interruptions in our life. For the trials and the testing produces in us perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you can become mature, not lacking anything. Number four. Interruptions. They humble us. They cause us to go, get before God and say, Lord, I am not in control. I need you. The world, the world is looking to God in this time. This would not happen if we didn't have this interruption. So I want to encourage you, children of God, believe in God's word. Amen. Whatever the interruptions in your life, know that God will work it all for your good. Because he causes all things to work for the good of those who love him and to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. In Psalms 143 and verses 8 to 10, the Bible uh, says something. It says, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. For I have put my trust in you. It says, Show me the way I should go. For to you I lift up my soul. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord. For I hide myself in you. Verse 10 says, Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. May your good spirit 
lead me on a level ground. Psalm 143, verses 8 to 10. Can you see the divine interventions in the, in the interruptions of our life? Can you see the divine intervention in the interruption of COVID in our lives? I don't know whether you are impatient and frustrated with the lockdown right now and you just can't wait to get back into the world. I want to ask you a question. What have you learned this past 22 days? Have you changed? Have you grown spiritually? Has your relationship with your children and your spouse gotten to another level? Have you spent time with Jesus, reading His Word and praying? Have you dealt with your bad habits? Well, the good news is we have two more weeks. Two more weeks. Let's use it wisely. Amen. Can I ask you just to bow your head as we pray this morning? Amen. Seeing God's divine intervention in the interruptions of our life. Let's pray. Almighty God, we want to say thank you to you today. Lord, that I pray for each and every one that's listening to me this morning. They will believe in the truth that you cause all things to work for our good. Father, sometimes we cannot see it. Sometimes it is hard for us to believe it. But God, help us to see your divine interventions. Help us to look at these interruptions as divine opportunities for us to, Father God, be a blessing for us to learn valuable lessons, for us to come back to our first love. And so, Lord, I pray this morning, help us to trust in your unfailing love. Help us to be convinced this morning that nothing will separate us from your love, that you love us unconditionally, mighty God. Lord, where the enemy has sown seeds of doubt and unbelief, today I pray that faith will rise up in each and every person that will hear this word this morning. And I pray especially for those this morning that maybe you don't know Jesus Christ. Maybe you don't um, know him as your personal savior. This morning I want to give you an opportunity to make him the Lord of your life. And wherever you are this morning, would you pray this prayer to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died and the third day you rose from the dead and that you are seated at the right hand of God the Father interceding for me. I believe this morning that you cause all things to work for the good of those who love you and to those who are called according to your plan and purpose. I declare today that I love you and that I want to fulfill the plan and purpose that you have for me. Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. Open my eyes. Give me a revelation that as I read your word, that I will see and know and believe in your plan and purpose for my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I want to say, case your family, may the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make His face shine upon you. May the Lord look at you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you till we, uh, next week. Um, I encourage you to read God's Word. I encourage you to pray. And for those of you who are prepared to communion, I really encourage you. We've been having communion every day. Pastor Val and I, we're sharing communion every day. And so... I want you to just take the cup and take the bread and the Bible says Jesus took bread and when he had broken it, he gave thanks and said, this is my body that was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is my precious blood that was shed for you. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. So Father, I pray for all our people who are busy and about to share communion with their families in their homes. 
Mighty God, I pray that you bless the bread, you bless the cup. And mighty God, we pray this morning that for those who are trusting you for healing, those who are trusting you for breakthrough, those who are trusting you, Lord, for the, the many, many situations that they are facing right now, that Lord, as they do this, they will believe your word, that you will cause all things to work for our good. Amen. Let's eat together. Let's drink together. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week going further. May the good Lord help you to see things. Look at opportunities where you will see His divine intervention. Amen. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today. For more videos and more content, please press the subscribe and like button. Have a blessed week.